Hi everyone, just giving a update on what's happening with the tank. Um, let's go through um, what has changed since um, my last video. I mounted the control for the apex above the tank. Um, my wife and eight-year-old son usually handle feedings and just having, um, my son likes to use Fusion, he just goes to the home desktop, um, punches in Fusion, it's saved as a favorite, and he uses it there. My wife likes to have the controller hit the control button, you know, down a couple times, and it turns the feed A, turns the pumps, skimmer off, puts it on a timer, turns everything back on in the right order, so I didn't want it, um, you know, too, too much in the way, but also wanted it to be easy access. Um, that's the Kessel AP700. I finally got a, um, I finally hooked up and started using my um, Senai Reef Monitor. I don't keep it plugged in all the time, but I was able to measure par. And I'm getting, you know, with, this, with the Kessel AP700, about... 18 inches above the water, running about 80-85% max intensity. And the far left and right corners I measured between 25 to 50 par. So I think, you know, when I bump it up to 100% intensity, you know, those corners will be okay for low light corals. I think I'll eventually have to move that Gunnipore a little bit, but, you know, it's still looking good, still getting good, decent flow in that corner. The mushrooms are looking okay. Phosphates are zero, so I see saw a couple of mushrooms browning out, so I'm heavy feeding. It's my Duncan, I just moved and glue, so he's not happy that I moved it. Have a couple of fuzzy mushroom on the left and another big mushroom there on the right. Um, I went to the fish store in Manhattan Aquariums and even though I promised myself that I wouldn't get anything, I ended up, you know, it was 10 bucks for that frag. So I ended up getting a Monty, Monty coral. So I put it there, nice highlight. But I'm gonna try and stick to my plan. No new corals, let the tank stabilize. You know, my copper band butterfly who keeps photobombing, he's around here somewhere. He likes clams. Oh, there he is. He likes clams. So every now and again, I put clams on a half shell in the tank. You know, the hermit crabs, I have some huge hermit crabs in this tank. They dragged it there, and I can't get it out because those clowns, if anything goes close to that spot, that's their home. That, you know, coral is their home. They attack anything that goes there. So, you know, what I do now, if you look, that's what's happening. I just, there will be, everyone just got fed, but the clam is mounted to the back of the scraper, to the back of the scraper. So they come around and pick at it. Let me see if he was ready for a meal. Um, maybe not, but you can see, um, you know, I leave it in there for a couple hours, let everyone pick, get there filled, and I take it out and freeze it again for tomorrow. So that's my solution to stop putting it on the floor and have everyone drag it around. Um, those are still on the sand bed, my hammer corals. I have to figure out where to move them. My wife still wants to change the left side of the tank. And, um, you know, so I'm not gonna really glue any corals to the left side, to the right side, sorry, right side until, you know, she's, She's the one that handles the aqua escape, so I have to leave it up to her. There's a hermit crab darting across. That's actually one of the small ones. An enemy looking good. He just got a nice big piece of clam. There's my um, seaweed thing I feed seaweed in. Nice Pocani rock I like. This is my little zoa garden, so I hopefully when that grows out, that looks nice. That's a leopard wrasse. Now let's go to the cabinet. One thing I changed since the last time we spoke, I got a breakout box and a couple of door switches. So now 
when you open the left side of the cabinet, the light, the sump light automatically comes on, which I like. Vertex Omega 150, skimming well. If you hear a little hum, the AC pump on the Vertex Omega 150 is the loudest piece of equipment on this tank. So I've tried, I've bought some um, OXO silicone mats. I've been meaning to, you know, um, put pieces there to kind of dampen the vibration a little bit. It's not loud, it's just, you know, because the tank is so silent now, that's, that's what you hear. That's the um, Skims Biopellet Reactor with about three quarter cup of bio pellets, keeping tumbling. Vectra M1 in the back, that's my um, Julian thing. I just, you know, um, store it there. I finally hooked up my um, my Tunzi 3155 ATO. And because, you know, coralline algae isn't really growing yet, I've decided to, I'm doing caulkwasser in my auto top off. So I have, um, you know, mixing about a half a teaspoon per gallon in my auto top off, so I am dosing Kalkwasser. Um, I do have three BRS pumps and containers, but I haven't hooked them up yet. Uh, the left, right side looks just as bad as last time. Haven't gotten a chance yet to kind of really make everything neat. Everything is just a mess. That's the vector controller just hanging there. Um, I really need to clean that up, so hopefully by the next video, you know, that'll be clean. I also want to show you kind of, you know, my supplements, what I use on a day-to-day -day basis. So, for my bio pellets, I am using Vertex bio pellets. Um, you know, last time I used BRS bio pellets, I think they're all the same, but this time it was on sale, so I decided to try, you know, why not try Vertex bio pellets. I soaked them for, um, you know, 48 hours before I use them. That stops them from floating to the top, so I did soak them in my old tank before I put up the Red Sea 350. This is why Milwaukee refractometer. That is my son, my three-year-old, kind of playing around, writing on it, but still works. Um, I had an Apex salinity probe and could never keep it calibrated, so you know, eventually got rid of it. Um, put that away when I'm talking about food. Um, I have a HANA checker here for, phos for pho phosphate and one for alkalinity. Um, nice digital readout, easy. You know, you don't have to read colors. I have bad eyesight, so it's nice to you know, just get a digital readout. I'm using Ken Marine Kalkwasser. I think they're all, you know, same but this was the cheapest on Amazon so I got it for carbon I use rocks 0 0.8 um, I got this from Marine Depot usually I buy you know BRS brand but got this on sale at Marine Depot is a lot cheaper so went ahead and purchased it because um, I'm running bio pellets from the start you know, there's no nitrates, no phosphates, so I am feeding a little bit reef energy. This is part of the Red Sea, you know, reef care program. So along with A and, you know, reef energy A and B and coral colors, you know, supplementing the tank until um, I am feeding heavy, but there's no nitrates, no phosphate. So, you know, I saw a couple corals start to brown out, so I started feeding heavy. Um, you know, after five or six days, I see them start to color up again. So, um, just have to, you know, if there's corals use nitrate phosphate from the water, especially soft corals, which is, which are what I have. So, you know, you just have to keep them fed. Reef chili. I think it's a staple. Marine snow. Acro power. I'm not sure which food and Ghana power. I'm not sure which food. You know is best but a guy at manhattan Re manhattan aquarium said hey just mix a little bit of each they're all different sizes and you know the corals will get what they want and again because i don't have any nutrients i'm not too worried about you know nitrates or phosphates 
for regular tests I use refoundation test kits calcium alkalinity magnesium for nitrate I use a salifer test kit and I also have um you know once I had a um I had an issue where my calcium re reagent for Red Sea was sitting too long and I got you know my numbers were way off so I always make sure you know I have a backup while I test for alkalinity once a week I do want to make sure every now and again once a month I test out with the Hanna checker and out here just to make sure everything is on point same thing with calcium I mainly use the Red Sea test kit but every now and again I test with the Salifer test kit just to make sure everything is on point Next time with the tank, you're probably going to see me using sw swapping out one or two of the Ecotech MP40s for a Tunzi 6095. Um, with the big two kind of um, big rock work, I um, you know need a little bit more flow in the back of the tank, and I can aim the Ecotech pumps so. I am going to try some Tunzi 6095. My friend, you know, who has a tank uses them and he's very happy. So um, I'm going to try. So once I have those connected, I am going to, um, you know, put up another video. Still the same fish, the copper band butterfly, who is, because I'm overfeeding, has finally leave my um, brain alone and it's recovering nicely. He had almost finished that head to the left. There's a little piece left and it's. It's finally opening back up. Still have the two clownfish, Flame Angel. You saw the leopard wrasse and um, the Tomini Tang. He's hiding somewhere. Where is he hiding? He mainly eats algae all day. I haven't gotten him to eat um, any mice or shrimp, but he um, he's really picking on um, algae off the rocks and he picks algae, algae sheets that I put in. So that's me signing off. Any questions, please put them in the comments. Thanks.